Hey guys, welcome back to Don't Forget the Art. I am so excited that you are here and I am excited about today's project too. We are talking about Giuseppe. Good, get, yeah, mm, I need some help on this one. Giuseppe Arcimboldo. Okay, so Giuseppe Archimoldo. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Gius, Giuseppe Archimoldo. Gi Giuseppe Archimoldo. I think that I think I've got it. it pretty close. Anywho, he's a Renaissance artist whose birthday is coming up this week, and I thought it would be fun for us to study him a little bit. Now, um, he is definitely a unique artist, especially considering he was in the Renaissance period. While his art is kind of realistic. He is best known for his paintings that he would create um, uh, portraits by piecing together fruit and vegetables and fish and leaves and sticks and all sorts of other unique combinations, even books to create a librarian. It's very, very unique and interesting. Something I would think of maybe more in the pop art uh, kind of style, but it actually happened back in the 1500s in Milan, Italy, um, as he was born on April 5th, 1526th, and he passed away in 1593. So he lived to be a, a ripe old age, especially for the Renaissance period. Now, you can certainly create a painting of a portrait or sketch, drawing, anything, any medium you'd like, obviously, um, like Giuseppe Archimoldo by piecing together other unique things like fruits, vegetables, sticks, leaves, books, that kind of stuff to create some kind of a portrait or even a landscape or anything unique like that. Um, I thought it would be kind of fun to take this maybe in a different direction and instead maybe create um, a personified fruit character. Um, you know, whichever one it is that you want to do, totally cool, whatever you'd like, this is what I'm going to do, because I had so much fun with the character art that we did not too long ago with Disney, I thought it would be fun to maybe play around with this. It was what I saw, give it a shot and see how it goes. So, the mediums that I'm, or the, the, the supplies that I'm using here, I am going to go and play around with watercolors, um, sketching and pencils too, um, to kind of start out. So I'm missing my sketchbook here, but you can use paper, some kind of sketchbook to kind of play around. Um, for my final piece, I am going to be using watercolored paper. So if you're going to do watercolors like me, you might want some of that. Um, I am using a regular number two pencil. I am using um, pencil sharpener for that, for the sketches. Uh, then if you're doing watercolors, you will need some um, tape. I'm using washi tape here to tape down the watercolor. You can always also use painter tape if you'd like. Um, this is um, my new watercolor containers so that I have so I can take them traveling. They don't take up too much space. I'm kind of excited about that. Um, but any watercolors will do, whichever one works best for you. I'm using my probably my two favorite brushes that you usually see uh, me here. These are the fine touches that I get over at uh, Hobby Lobby. A round number six and a round number 14. And then some water, um, paint water, paper towels, which I'm sure I'll probably forget to use. And that's about it. Some creativity and fun imagination, and you've got yourself some artwork. So let's get to it. 
So the first thing I did with this project was to play around a little bit, okay? I pulled out my sketchbook and I started sketching around. Now this is a new kind of medium or idea, not really medium, I shouldn't say medium. It's a new subject for me that I've never really played around with before. So kind of personifying fruit. And now certainly you could do a subject matter made out of something else, kind of following more in line with, you know, the idea behind this. But I decided to kind of reverse it. Instead of, um, you know, using the fruit to create a person, I thought it would be more fun to kind of personify the fruit. So I started playing around. I created a little orange lady. We're in Florida. Weather's getting warmer. I'm ready for a beach day. And I just kind of thought that, you know, Florida, the fruit from Florida might be a little fun to create a little beachy girl going to the beach, having some fun. The apple I thought would be kind of fun for, you know, guy, girl, whichever it is. I thought apple for the teacher. And so I got a book in hand, half glasses on, looking kind of serious. And then of course with the blueberry, I thought, you know, blueberry antioxidants, that's a really smart fruit, right? And so I dressed him up all nice and smarty smart pants there. Um, looks like something serious with the uh, briefcase going on. And a taco is just fun, so I thought I'd throw him in there as well. And then I thought with the pineapple, I thought of those girls who used to be pictured with the fruit things on their head. But anyway, I, that's where I was. And so my final project after playing around, um, I'm going to go ahead and create a, a orange here going to the beach. So we'll try that out. So for this project, I worked off camera um, after sketching out a few of those ideas and designs while I was out and about. So I took my little sketchbook that's pretty beaten up because it's in my purse all the time. And I sketched out an idea for this project. And that's what I enjoy doing. I carry my sketchbook all, all over with me. That doesn't mean it always comes out. The good news is it's there for when I am ready. So I already had this kind of planned out in my head and I played around with the sketch so that it made it easier when I came here to my <clears throat> nice, clean, crisp watercolor paper. I already kind of had the idea of what I wanted my orange beach lady to look like. So it made the sketching out project um, idea a little bit easier. Um, I will say that. So don't be afraid of getting a sketchbook. Don't be afraid of getting a scrap piece of paper and playing around with ideas. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Most artists will do thumbnails or play around with something a little bit, um, you know, not on the final product. The final product has probably gone through many different ideas and transitions, um, you know, from start to finish. Um, that you don't really see on the canvas or final product that's right in front of you. Um, so I sketched out this this uh, orange lady with her cute little um, beach uh, outfit on. Um, and I knew that I wanted to keep her in with the reds and oranges. Red, orange, yellow was kind of where I wanted to stay with her. Now obviously since we're at the beach, I thought it would be good to kind of pair those colors up with the blues because blue, as you know, is orange's complementary color. Um, so I had the kind of this color scheme down. The biggest thing, as you know, for this type of project with watercolors is kind of keeping control of those watercolors. Watercolors is one of those tricky mediums you always hear me say. People love it or hate it because it's kind of difficult to control. For some people, they love that about watercolors. 
I kind of like it, keeps my control freak in check. Um, other people do not. Uh, the biggest thing is working in areas so that everything doesn't bleed together unless that's the look that you're going for. So I started with, I believe, the blue sky, um, put the sky in the background, and I tried to make it so that there it was darker in some areas than in others. This would give the implication, uh, without me actually having to go in and paint clouds, that it's kind of a you know cloudy sky, you know beautiful day, to help to give it a little bit more of a look of a sky color. Um, and the same thing, so I wet all of that and let it do its thing. Then I moved to a different area and started working on that. The biggest thing with watercolors is to work in areas one at a time, let the area around dry until you work on back on that area, unless you want to keep working it while it's still wet so things blend together. Or if you want things to blend together from one section to the next. If you do not, you really need to wait for sections to dry one at a time. Um, now I tried playing around with, um, you know, the different colors and some shadows with the woman, with the hat, with the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the shapes of the orange. And I kind of like the fact that everything didn't turn out perfect in the same way. Again, that's another kind of characteristic that's very, very um, uh, central. It's very common in watercolors where everything is not necessarily um, the same color, especially in different sections. You'll see that in the orange sections of um, the woman's face, the orange woman's face. Um, and I like that about it. It kind of gives it that sketchy kind of watercolor feel and that just kind of makes it fun. Uh, the same thing too with the blue. When I put the blue in for the water, I didn't cover the whole thing. I just dabbed my brush, kind of moved it back and forth. That was going to help me to create that illusion of waves without actually going in and having to paint the waves. It's one of the reasons why I really like watercolor um, and the style that watercolor gives because you can do so much. You can give so many impressions of things happening without actually having to go in and make those things happen. Uh, for me, the biggest thing is remembering not to put my hand down because so much is still wet. I do that all the time, whether it's watercolors, whether it's acrylics, doesn't matter. I'm going to stick my hand in it. That's just what I do. Um, but, you know, it's what it is. Overall, I really like the way the piece turned out. I did turn to my Prismacolor pencils to kind of punch out some of the shadows, to kind of outline some of the characters. Although, I will say, um, for the most part, I think I did a pretty good job with the um, just the uh, watercolors by themselves. Um, it's a medium that can be tricky to start with if you stick with it you're going to find a lot of joy and, um, you know, learn just like anything. The more you practice with it, the more you play around with it, the better you're going to get. Um, and I really like the way that this one turned out. Um, that watercolor feel, translucent kind of feel, I think helps because, um, you know, it is that idea that uh, it's a beach and so the water and the watercolor look to it definitely is fitting. And as we're going into spring and summer, I don't know, there's something about the watercolors that really to me just speaks during spring and summer. It's just light and airy. You can see the paper through it. It's, it's fun. Um, it's a medium I like to use around this time uh, with spring and summer. So um, there you go. There's my take on it. And uh, hopefully you uh, enjoy my cute little picture.
here is my final product here, my final project. I still have my sketches, of course, too, and there's nothing wrong with sketches. I did forget to mention in my intro that I did use some of my Prismacolor pencils to kind of finish off some of the edges and give a little bit final touches. It's not uncommon for um, watercolors and colored pencils to go hand in hand, so don't be afraid to mix the medium around. Again, nothing wrong with that. It's always fun, always play. That's what makes it awesome. Um, I like it. It's definitely not what Giuseppe Archimoldo co uh, created. But it is fun. It's whimsical. It reminds me of Florida, and it certainly reminds me of the beach. I'm waiting for that water to warm up um, so that I can go get in that beach. Um, hopefully, I won't get sunburned. That's my only fear right now. But other than that, I hope you have fun creating some um, either creative fruit characters like this one or... Um, creating a portrait made out of fruit in the style of Giuseppe Archimoldo. Um, the biggest thing I hope is that you let your creativity run wild. Don't be afraid that because nobody else has done it before that you can't do it too. Um, this is what play is all about. Is everything going to always work out spectacularly? Mm, no. Not every piece is meant to be a masterpiece, and that's okay. This is how we learn, this is how we grow, this is how we have fun. And ultimately, I think that's really what art is supposed to be. It's supposed to be fun, it's supposed to be play, it's supposed to be creativity. If you're not enjoying it, then why in the world are you doing it, right? Um, so make sure that you're having fun and enjoying it above all. Um, I hope you try this. If you do try it and create something, I would love to see your amazing creations. You can catch me over on Facebook, Instagram, post it on social media with the hashtag don't forget the art. You can also catch me over on don't forget the art.com. And that's about it, guys. Have some fun, get creative, let those juices flow and see what comes about. Now, I did not sign it, so since she's in orange here, I'm going to go ahead and sign right down here. And that's it. Have fun, guys. Enjoy. Go make a mess and uh, have fun while doing it. Go make some memories with yourself, with your kids, whatever the reason. Go and do it. Have fun. Happy arting.